Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. On Roku, in the sports section, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. On iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me say this. Jermaine Taylor today is the IBF middleweight champion. He defeated Sam Solomon last night. I don't dispute that in the slightest. He knocked Solomon down several times in the second half of the fight. The headlines talk about Jermaine Taylor reestablishing or resurrecting his career. There's a lot of hoopla today about Jermaine Taylor's comeback. I think the truth is more complicated, right? I predicted that Sam Solomon, the champion, would win this fight. And let me just tell you, I've posted the fight in my favorites on my YouTube channel page. Just understand that the fight is being commentated upon by Teddy Atlas. The first round that Teddy Atlas gives to Jermaine Taylor is the sixth round of the fight. Right? I'm just here to tell you that after an initial feeling out period of let's say two rounds, Sam Solomon took over the fight. He was outboxing Jermaine Taylor. As you look at the fight, just think of the balance of the fighters. Right? Jermaine Taylor has wooden legs. He's not moving that well. Sam Solomon is the person with the mobility. Sam Solomon is the person with the better foot speed, with the better balance. Sam Solomon is the person who's moving his upper body. He's hiding his upper body while still in front of Jermaine Taylor. Taylor is the person who seems gun-shy, can't let his hands go, can't land his lead jab. Because Sam Solomon's shorter and bends at the waist, Taylor can't find Solomon's body, right? I believe it's obvious at the end of the fifth round that barring something major, Sam Solomon was on his way to successfully defending his title. The story would have been completely the opposite of what it is today. Now what happened in the second half of the fight, and it's clear as you're watching the fight, and I know Sam Solomon is too much of a gentleman to own up to it, right? He's praising Taylor right now, and he's saying the classy things that a guy who's just been dethroned says, right? But what happens is Sam Solomon's back leg goes. In the next few days, we're going to find out exactly what the injury was. Understand Solomon has had leg problems in the past, right? But just know this. Before Solomon's leg goes, and it seems to be kind of a freak accident, right? Before his leg goes, Sam Solomon's winning the fight, right? As I said, Teddy Atlas doesn't give Taylor a round until the sixth round of the fight. On my scorecard, I thought Solomon had a problem with Taylor's length the first two rounds. But then I had Sam Solomon winning the third, fourth, and fifth rounds, right? Solomon even lands the best punch of the fight. It's a straight right hand in the third round, right? He starts to find a home. Taylor, who, quite frankly, between these two guys, even though he's chronologically much younger than Solomon, who's in his 40s, Taylor looks like he's the older fighter. Right? He's the guy who clearly looks more shop-worn. Right? He's the guy who freezes at times when the action's going on. He didn't look that good to me. 
But of course, once Solomon's leg goes, and I'm guessing it has to be at least a torn meniscus. Understand, it's so bad that when you look at the second knockdown, I don't even think Solomon's hurt. I just think he's backing up and then the leg buckles, right? It, it's clear that he's fighting on one leg the second half of the fight. It's clear he's not the same fighter he was in rounds three, four, and five, right? Understand, Sam Solomon without movement is not Sam Solomon, right? That would be like taking the power away from Vladimir Klitschko. It's just not the same, right? So, let's celebrate Jermaine Taylor's win, right? I don't fault any fighter for showing up ready to fight and then fighting, right? Boxing is a war of attrition. Sam Solomon clearly gets knocked down several times in the second half of the fight and uh, loses the fight. There's no question about it. So Jermaine Taylor is the champion. He earned it, right? But this is more of an injury fight than a skill fight because when both fighters had both of their legs, it was clear to me that the better boxer was Sam Solomon. So let's talk about the future now of Jermaine Taylor. Let's give a prognosis. Understand, if the public is wrong, if Jermaine Taylor is not back, if Jermaine Taylor fought a guy, was getting outgunned, and then the guy's knee explodes, right? torn ligament, torn meniscus, whatever. We'll find out. But when the guy's knee explodes and Taylor then gets the belt, right? If that's the real story, then Taylor's in big trouble if the IBF rules are followed and he fights Hassan Endem in his next fight. There's simply no way he'll be able to handle a mobile fighter. We know that from the first half of this fight, right? There's no way, in my opinion, Taylor, who looks to be an old 36, would be able to handle Hassan Endam, right? Let's talk about really a much more likely scenario. Understand, Taylor is accused of shooting a cousin Right, he was allowed to fight while the criminal justice system deals with the shooting case. Right, understand that's bad, folks. Right, you have at least one state boxing commissioner, Larry Hazard of New Jersey, openly say that he would not have allowed Taylor to fight. Right, the criminal issue is separate and distinct from the health issue. And understand, Taylor in the past had bleeding on the brain. That has ended careers in the past. Joe Messi's career, for example. It's highly unusual that Taylor has been able to, from a health perspective, continue fighting. Right? To get his boxing license back, Taylor had to go to places like the Mayo Clinic. He had to literally get reports from doctors showing that he was at no greater risk of a further brain bleed than the typical boxer, right? Well, understand, apart from the health concerns, and I believe the health concerns are major, because Taylor's not the Taylor he was when he was in his 20s, right? I believe the brain concerns are such that you see them when he's against a mobile opponent. It would have been interesting since Taylor had stamina problems in the past to have seen what would have happened if Solomon had two legs in the second half of this fight, right? It would have been interesting to see as Taylor tired just how much his coordination would have deteriorated. 
Keep in mind, the Arthur Abraham knockout of Taylor is not the last time Taylor was knocked down. He was knocked down during his comeback by Caleb Truax, right, before the Sam Solomon fight. But apart from the health concerns with Taylor, they're criminal justice concerns, right? Understand he's now well into his 30s. I believe he's 36 years old, right? If there's an investigation, right, even if his cousin retracts his statements, etc., understand the district attorney has authority to prosecute the case. Right? If Taylor pleads to anything, right, if he gets lucky, and let's say he, you know, somehow is able to plead out to some minor offense that requires years of probation, just understand he would still be under the auspices of boxing regulators. Just understand if he admits to shooting his cousin. And if the shooting's not justified, if it's not self-defense, right, then Taylor could be suspended a year or two. He'd have to give up his IBF belt. Right? So, let's just say, I don't believe there is a good prognosis for Jermaine Taylor. Number one, I don't think he looked championship level. I believe he loses to Hassan and Jickham. Let's hope no boxing board even considers having this guy in the ring against Janady Golovkin, right? Understand, he's a middleweight champion, right? He'd be fighting other championship-level fighters. Let's hope no boxing board allows him in the ring with another middleweight champion, Miguel Cotto. Right? I don't want to see as heavy a puncher as Janady Golovkin or as good a mover as Miguel Cotto with Freddie Roach in against Jermaine Taylor. Right? I'm a Taylor skeptic. I was before this fight. I am after this fight. I admit I was wrong Right, because Solomon's knee blew up. All I have to say to the hardcore boxing fan out there is please watch the fight before Solomon's knee explodes. Right? Look at rounds three, four, and five. Understand, too, as you're looking at the tape, there are times when Taylor steps forward and Solomon is rolling with punches. Right? Solomon has an active upper body. And it looks like Taylor's doing things that he's not doing, right? The replays, and they show you the replays, show that he's missing a lot of the punches. What's not missing is Solomon's end of a combination straight right hand. Solomon, multiple times in this fight, at the end of the combination, comes in with a right hand right down Main Street that's hitting Taylor flush. Now, Solomon isn't a big puncher. Let's hope Taylor doesn't get hit with a shot like that from a big puncher, like, let's say, a Peter Quillen or a Janady Golovkin. Right? So I believe the IBF middleweight title is in play. Right? I know I'm going to sound like a contrarian this morning with all the great headlines, but I believe Jermaine Taylor is a vulnerable champion. If he's allowed back in the ring by the criminal justice system, I'd be curious to see who he fights, right? If it's some guy with a lot of movement or if it's a heavy-handed guy, Chances are I'm going to continue to fade Jermaine Taylor even after the biggest moment of his career 
in several years. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.